birth. Sophia of Prussia. She was born the 14th of June 1870 and died the 13th of January 1932. Princess Sophia was born in Prussia on the 14th of June 1870. Her father, Prince Frederick of Prussia, and her mother, Victoria, Princess Royal of the United Kingdom, herself the eldest daughter of Queen Victoria and Prince Albert, were already the parents of a large family, and as the penultimate child, Sophia was 11 years younger than her eldest brother, the future Emperor Wilhelm II of Germany. Sophia received a liberal and anglophile education under the supervision of her mother, Victoria Princess Royal. In 1889, less than a year after the death of her father, she married her third cousin, the Duke of Sparta and heir of the Greek throne. After a difficult period of adaptation in her new country, Sophia gave birth to six children and became involved in their assistance to the poor, following in the footsteps of her mother-in-law, Queen Olga. Her grandmother, Queen Victoria, decorated her with the Red Cross. The defeat of the Greek army against the Turkish troops of Mustafa Kemal forced Constantine I to abdicate in favour of his eldest son George in 1922. Sophia and her family were forced to a new exile and settled in Italy. She spent her last years alongside her family and died of cancer in Germany in 1932. Death, Henry Vane the Younger. On the 14th of June, 1662, Henry Vane was taken to Tower Hill and executed. Although he had been sentenced to the commoner's death of being hanged and then drawn and quartered, King Charles II was persuaded to grant him the gentleman's death of beheading. Henry Vane was an English politician, statesman and colonial governor. He was the governor of the Massachusetts Bay Colony and supported the creation of Roger Williams Rhode Island Colony and Harvard College. He returned to England in 1637 and was a leading parliamentarian during the English Civil War. He worked closely with Oliver Cromwell but was arrested under orders from King Charles II following his restoration to the throne.
Although he was formally granted clemency by Charles II, he was charged with high treason by Parliament in 1662. In a court proceeding in which he was denied counsel and the opportunity to properly prepare a defence, he was convicted by the jury. Charles withdrew his earlier clemency and he was beheaded on Tower Hill on the 14th of June 1662. He was recognised by his political peers as a competent administrator and a wily and persuasive negotiator and politician. His books and pamphlets written on political and religious subjects are still analysed today and he is remembered in Massachusetts and Rhode Island as an early champion of religious freedom. Event. In 1789, the HMS Bounty Mutiny survivors, including Captain William Bly and 18 others, reached Timor after a nearly 7,400 kilometres, that's a 4,600 mile journey in an open boat. The mutiny on the Royal Navy vessel, the HMS Bounty, occurred in the South Pacific on the 20th of April 1789. Disaffected crewmen, led by Acting Lieutenant Fletcher Christian, seized control of the ship from their captain, Lieutenant William Bly, and set him and 18 loyalists adrift in the ship's open launch. The mutineers variously settled on Tahiti or Pitcairn Island. The bounty had left England in 1787 on a mission to collect and transport breadfruit. A five month layout in Tahiti during which many of the men lived ashore and formed relationships with native Polynesians proved harmful to discipline. Relations between Bly and his crew deteriorated after he began handing out increasingly harsh punishments, criticism and abuse. After three weeks back at sea, Bly was forced from the ship. 25 men remained on board afterwards, including loyalists held against their will. Fletcher Christian's group remained undiscovered on Pitcairn Island until 1808, by which time only one mutineer, John Adams, remained alive. Almost all his fellow mutineers had been killed, either by each other or by their Polynesian companions. Descendants of the mutineers and their Tahitian captives still live on the island today. The generally accepted view of Bly as an overbearing monster and Christian as a tragic victim of circumstance, as depicted in well-known film accounts, has been challenged by historians.